Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Simon Volta. I'm the Director of Sales here with V-Technologies. I'm going to go through a quick little presentation here to get started, and then I'm going to uh, walk you through a workflow. Today, we're going to be speaking uh, about uh, QuickBooks in our e-commerce integration uh, with Starship. Uh, so we refer to that as our e-commerce extension. Uh, and I do want to start off uh, by saying that uh, today we're going to showcase our big commerce uh, integration uh, with QuickBooks. Uh, however, if you do use any of the platforms um, such as Shopify, Magento, WooCommerce, um, any of those, we do all of our workflows are identically the same. Uh, there might be some minor differences in the right back into the e-commerce cart. Um, and if we do have some of those on the line today, we can definitely take those offline and explain to you what happens in your individual shopping carts um, so you can kind of get a better feel. So with that being said, let me get the presentation started here. So a little bit about V-Technologies. For those of you who don't know us, um, we have been around uh, since 1987. Starship itself has been is celebrating its 30-year anniversary this year. Um, we uh, Starship came out in 1989, uh, so we definitely have a lot of years of experience in the shipping industry, especially with the different carriers. Uh, we have about 16-year relationship with the Intuit uh, folks with QuickBooks, uh, and we have about 10,000 customers across ERPs using the application today, uh, nationwide and some in Canada as well. Um, I do have FedEx and UPS listed at the bottom because they do offer subsidy programs um, that you might be familiar with, with the UPS CTP program or the FedEx Technology Incentive Program uh, that basically will um, help pay for a solution like Starship. <clears throat> So if you are interested with those programs, I would encourage you to check with your individual carrier reps. Uh, as far as some of the features I'm going to highlight today uh, in the integration I'm about to show you, um, we're basically going to pull in individual orders, or we can pull in orders uh, via batch process, so it's your preference. Uh, today I'm going to focus on a single order. Uh, Starship also gives you the ability of combining your carriers together, so it's a single platform uh, that supports multi-carrier, so UPS, FedEx, uh, we also support LTL carriers as well. Um, so if you are doing any LTL shipping, uh, definitely Starship can help you uh, um, improve that workflow. Uh, however, I'm not going to get into that in today's webinar, uh, but in future webinars or if you like a one-off demo regarding your LTL movement, we can talk about that as well. Uh, we do support line item integration. So all the line items from um, your shopping cart order that come into QuickBooks um, <clears throat> we're going to pull all that information in the Starship to allow you to pack those items as you see fit um, so we can accurately rate shop those um, if you prefer that, um, or you can also turn line items off as a preference setting as well. So again, it's just an option in Starship to allow you to do different things. Uh, packing scenarios, we can uh, tell Starship basically that one item belongs in uh, a certain packaging type automatically. So if you have case packs or maybe multiple quantities of a SKU, um, we can set that up, up front. So that way Starship knows to create two boxes in case um, we hit the max limit on that particular SKU. Um, rate shop is another key feature of Starship. So we can rate shop your various carriers you have licensed on your um, Starship license. So we can show you your negotiated rates with those carriers. Uh, the one uh, carrier we do provide you with the discounts for is the post office. Um, so you'll benefit from the discounted CPP pricing that all of our Starship users uh, receive today. And you can make a determination if maybe uh, some of these e-commerce orders you might be processing are beneficial to move via priority mail or maybe first class mail uh, versus a UPS ground or a FedEx ground type of movement. Um, Starship also offers the e-commerce extension, which we're going to talk uh, more in depth about in a few minutes. And we also can create all of your package labels, your pallet labels for LTL, your packing list. We can print all of that together at the end um, to keep everything combined and packaged together. And then we can also um, provide you with custom email notifications out to your customers to notify them of basically the tracking information. Uh, we can put um, use it as a marketing tool for future orders with maybe a percentage off. Uh, we can uh, attach documents like a packing list to the email. So we have various things we can do with our custom email a notification tool that I'll show you um, that may be beneficial to these e-commerce orders that you might be moving. 
And then dashboard, uh, we basically have the ability to provide you with a bunch of out-of-box reports, along with the ability to rate shop, uh, tracking of packages regardless of the carrier, so more of a customer service sales oriented tool, which doesn't require any additional user seats. Um, so with that being said, um, <clears throat> sorry about that. So as mentioned before, the shopping carts that we offer today um, that are available in the latest Starship release are all basically listed up top above the line. Um, so basically if any one of these carts you're using today, um, Starship can definitely help with the workflow I'm about to show you. Um, the ones below the line um, are due out in our next, or a few of them are due out in our next release, like Etsy, Squarespace, uh, OpenCart, and then our, a couple additional ones will be available in the following release from that. Um, but again, if any of these work um, e-commerce or um, shopping carts or marketplaces are you being utilized today, we definitely want to have you take a look and see what maybe right back differences might exist um, with Starship as it writes back. So as we talked about um, a little bit, you know, the workflow. Um, so what you're about to see is basically me pull in an order from Big Commerce into QuickBooks and just want to put out there, Starship doesn't help in that regard. We do get that question asked to us a lot. How does how can we get our e-commerce orders into QuickBooks? Fortunately, Starship at this time does not provide that assistance. You would have to use another application or manually get those orders into QuickBooks. But where Starship basically can help is pull that order from QuickBooks. Um, and then once we process the label with the carriers, um, we can basically send the information back into QuickBooks uh, and then also send the updated tracking information into your shopping cart at the same time that we update QuickBooks and also mark your order fulfilled um, or shipped, um, whatever the status um, is being used in your individual shopping carts. So that's a bit of the workflow you're about to see here as well. This just provides you with a list of the various carriers we have, both on the parcel and the LTL uh, side. So again, if any of these are being utilized on the LTL front, I encourage you to reach out to me. Um, we can talk about the workflow with LTL, uh, but again, today we're not gonna get into that. Um, but again, if it is something of, you know, you're being, you're being utilized, we can definitely help streamline that workflow for you. And off to the demo. Okay. So I'm going to start in QuickBooks. Um, so I've created an e-commerce order in Big Commerce, as I mentioned. Um, so I just want to point out a few um, things that we can work with. So we can work with your sales order uh, in QuickBooks. Uh, we can also work with your sales invoice in QuickBooks Enterprise. Um, we also support QuickBooks Online, would be the other version of QuickBooks we can integrate with Starship. Um, so we would work with the invoice document on the online um, side of things. Um, so either workflow would work the same. A um, couple things I want to point out from an e-commerce integration. Um, we do require you to have the order number from your shopping cart, some field in QuickBooks, so we can map to that. Uh, and then we also require you to have the e-commerce name um, set here, so we can map to that in the case where you might have multiple shopping carts that exist. Um, so again, if we can map to those two fields, it tells Starship that we now have to write back to your big commerce um, order number 251. Uh, which is basically the order number we're working with here. I basically created my sales order based on the two items that my customer ordered from my shopping cart, the tennis ball and my Harry Potter book. Um, we're going to pull in all this information here into Starship, so your description, your item number, the quantity that was ordered, and all along with the values of each of those items will come in to Starship as well. Uh, we also map over your ship, ship via field, so this case would be UPS. Um, so we're going to bring that into Starship along with your ship to information as well, uh, we're going to bring in. So all of that information is now going to be brought into Starship. So once I come into the application here, um, this would be your new platform. So if you're using WorldShip today, Ship Manager, Post Office Portal, all of that will go away. Starship kind of takes the place of all of those platforms to simplify the process. So we can have a couple different ways we pull in that order. If your sales order or sales invoice is barcoded, you could use a wedge type scanner to scan that in. If it's not, we can type in the uh, order number if we know that, or we can simply use our lookup window and locate the order that's ready to be shipped. So in this case, there it is right there, number 49. 
I want to load my document. And as I load my document, all the information is going to pull into Starship. So you'll notice that the ship via was pulled in via UPS ground. It's billing my account number. Um, in case the fact you might be billing third party uh, or another account, we can also help you with that by having you put in the right account number for the uh, customer you're shipping to in QuickBooks where we can map to that to pull in the right account number we need to bill third party. Um, the sender information will default to you unless if you get into a drop ship scenario where we basically would put a um, map to maybe a bill to section in, in QuickBooks. Uh, so we can help you there as well. But 99% of the times, it will default to you uh, being a sender. The ship to is from the ship to information. We do an address validation for all domestic US addresses. So that's what this green checkbox represents. We verified that the street address is correct, the city, uh, the city, state, and zip. And then we also do a secondary uh, validation for residential to make sure that the residential uh, flag is checked in this particular case um, versus a commercial location. Down at the bottom, we'll show you all of your line items I mentioned earlier. So the tennis ball and the Harry Potter book have now come into Starship. I've defaulted this so it comes into one box. Um, you do have the capabilities of uh, adding boxes over to the right here if you wanted to in case that these two items are not going to fit. Um, it's very simple and just come here and you can add a secondary box to Starship with a click of a button. <clears throat> it's automatically going to default to your default packaging type. But if I wanted to, I can change it to any one of my packaging types I have stored inside of the Starship database. So in this case here, if I wanted to, and I wanted to get specific, and I want to tell my customer what was inside of each box, I can simply drag and drop items if I wanted to. You don't have to. You can leave it as such. As long as the box has dimensions and weight, um, you're able to ship this product out the way it was. So now I have basically one item in each box. The item level detail here, just to break this all down, is all mappings we do in the implementation to QuickBooks. So it's your QuickBooks item number, it's your description, it's your value, it's your weight of the individual item being shown here. That's all standard mappings. If it was LTL related, we would have you store your NMFC code and class information, so that way we can rate those shipments properly. And if you're shipping any hazardous material, we also can help you there, uh, in which basically we can store hazmat profiles for your individual items. So that way you don't have to enter that information every time as you ship your products. <clears throat> On the order tab, um, just to review this quickly, you'll notice here basically you'll see the big commerce name and the e-commerce name, and you know that we're writing back to 251, which is the sales order inside of big commerce. So that's telling you that the mappings are set properly. Um, so that way you know that you know, you're going to have a correct um, tracking information and things in your big commerce platform as well. On the rate shop tab, it will always default to what your ship via is. Um, so this being UPS ground, that's what's being listed here. This is your negotiated rate being shown. We can also show published rates if we wanted to. Um, but here, if you hit shop all, um, it will go out and hit each of your carrier's API and pull back your negotiated rates. Um, the only exception being post office, since we're providing you those rates already, um, you'll be able to see what those are compared to your negotiated rates with the carriers. And you'll notice here, um, it'll sort it by lowest to highest. So it'll list all the different post office services first. And you'll notice like a priority mail, for instance, is a little cheaper um, by, you know, actually quite a bit cheaper. So you're going to save yourself roughly say $9, $11 roughly, if you were to ship this uh, product out priority mail versus UPS ground. Um, and you're also going to see an estimated time of delivery be returned. So if you were to ship this product out today, with the post office, you would get there by tomorrow, Friday, uh, versus UPS being Tuesday delivery. So it's kind of a no-brainer for me to change it if I wanted to, and I can simply do that by clicking the little purple box, and now you'll notice to change it over to my Priority Mail account, and I can now print my Priority Mail label out of Starship and have that right back into QuickBooks as well as Big Commerce. One thing I do want to mention here as well, um, we do have something called freight rules where we can apply different uh, rules to your rates. So if you don't want to pass along your full discount, uh, in this case, you can see here my discount for the post office would be $16.30. Um, the applied rate is what you're going to charge your customer. I have a freight rule that basically tells uh, Starship that says every box gets hit with a $5 handling fee. That's why you see $26.30. And therefore, I'm going to put that number back into QuickBooks 
so I can charge my customer accordingly um, if I wanted to. We can also turn off rating uh, if it's e-commerce related, since most of you probably have customers uh, that are going to be paying for freight up front through the cart. Um, we can also just write back tracking information into to QuickBooks if we wanted to do that as well. So if I'm ready to process the shipment, I can simply do that by hitting F5 or the icon up top here. It basically go out, basically let the post office know in this situation that I have two packages ready. Um, it's also going to print out what we call our smart label. Um, we have many different printing options that we offer. Um, <clears throat> we've developed this one particular label in general for the packing list feature. Um, we can print this to an eight and a half by 11 label stock. So one half is really a four by six die cut you would peel off and stick on the box. The other half is basically your packing list. So you can put that inside of each package and tell the customer in this, you know, in this box I have my tennis ball and then my other box I'm gonna have my Harry Potter book. It's gonna put back um, that sales order number from Big Commerce in this situation as well as the sales order number um, from QuickBooks as well. You also have the ability of printing this to a thermal printer, both documents. So the label would print first, the, the packing list can print right behind it. You can print the packing list to a laser printer and have the label print to a thermal. It's your preference. We have many different settings, as I mentioned, inside of Starship to allow you to do those things. So you'll see here the second label will print right behind it, and you'll notice the Harry Potter book would be in this box, and now you're done with processing the shipment altogether. <clears throat> and now the write back will happen in real time to QuickBooks. So if I bring us back in the QuickBooks for a second before I go over to Big Commerce, so if I pull up my order number, oops. you'll notice I have my two tracking numbers, the ship date that the order was shipped on and the service that was used. I also put back that $26 in here, but as I mentioned, we can turn this piece off so it would show zero in case you don't want to bill back your customer more than what they have already paid you on the cart. And then taking you into Big Commerce. Um, so in the Big Commerce side, um, if I just refresh my page, you'll notice order number 251 is what I was working on. Um, so on the, the side with uh, Big Commerce here, <clears throat> the one thing I do want to mention is the status before we import this in does need to show a waiting fulfillment. Um, in order for us to be able to see it, that it's being uh, needing to be shipped. Um, you'll notice here order number 251 now has changed automatically to shipped from awaiting fulfillment. If I break this out further for you to see it a little further, you'll notice here we put the two tracking numbers um, associated to the shipment, and each of these tracking numbers you can drill into a little further. You'll notice it'll break it out by the service level that was used, the ship, we put the update, the notes, uh, with the associated two tracking numbers, all of that information on here as well inside of BigCommerce for you. And again, this would be applicable to really all of our shopping carts. Um, it might be just some minor differences of where the write back actually occurs um, and what happens here as well. So again, I would encourage you to talk to me about different shopping cart integrations, but the workflow is identically to what you just saw. So that concludes the e-commerce with QuickBooks integration with Starship. Um, before I open it up to questions, I do want to just review just a couple other things here. So I mentioned our um, <clears throat> e-notify tool with a custom e email notification. Uh, so here, basically, you have the ability um, to provide your customer with a custom email that goes out to them. Um, in this case here, you'll notice once this loads, I have an order here basically that <clears throat> will show all of the um, information with your company logo, all the item information in here. Um, again, this is a full template designer that you receive, so you can make this look and feel however you like. So you can remove fields, you can add fields. This is just one basic example I've kind of created, um, but I'm basically telling my customer how many they ordered, what they were shipped. Um, I'm telling them to be on the lookout for the FedEx truck on this particular date. And then this hyperlink here, the tracking number, is the actual hyperlink that will take them directly out to the FedEx website so they can track their own orders. And then also what I'm doing is providing a marketing tool here. So I'm telling them to come back to my website. So therefore, I'm giving them a coupon code for a future order that they're going to get 10% off on 
Um, if that's not applicable, you might use it for the future product announcement um, or any other information you want to, you know, relay over to your customer as well. And you can also use this um, to, like I said, attach different um, documents that Starship will create, such as like a packing list or maybe it's international and you want to, you know, provide commercial invoice information. You, we can do that uh, very easily through this tool. The other thing I like to mention about the tool is basically you like to batch process all of your emails. So basically you don't want these to go out when you ship your label in case the carrier forgets to show up at night. Um, so you want to make sure the carrier has picked up all the packages and then have these batched at the end of the day and then have these then sent out automatically, say at six o'clock in the evening to your customers. Uh, and once that happens, all your customers will receive their emails with the updated tracking status of the individual packages. Last but not least that I like to review is our dashboard. Um, so on our dashboard tool here, um, we basically have <clears throat> um, ways for customer service to come in here and track packages. Um, so for real easy, you can come in under tools, find a shipment and locate and order by any one of these available fields. So if they know the contact name or PO number or maybe an invoice number, you can put that information into this section, um, hit okay. And basically what you're gonna get is basically a, a box that opens up to this. Um, and you'll notice here, it's gonna give you all the information as far as what carrier has it, what service was used, the live tracking number, where it is in status. So this shows process, which basically means it hasn't left the building yet, um, but it may show delivered, it may show in transit. Um, but again, we give you all the available information that we have on the particular shipment, along with how many packages were shipped, along with how many um, items were in that box. So in case if you maybe say had three items and one was missing, this might give you a good chance to go back and investigate why one item is missing from this particular shipment uh, with the customer. So that's one thing they can do in here. Uh, the other thing we have the availability to do is the reports. Um, so all of these you'll notice here are all out of the box reports, anything from address correction to late deliveries, to simple like I wanna see how much I'm charging my customer to how much the carrier is charging me. Um, we can give that breakdown to you by individual carrier and in, even individual name by customer. So you can see maybe there's one customer that you might be losing freight cost on. We can maybe apply a different freight rule to that customer so that way you're not uh, upside down on your overall shipping. And then last but not least, we have various analytical tools in here to kind of look at how you're diversified with the carriers. Um, along with how many users um, you know, might be shipping. If you have multiple users in your shipping environment, kind of looking at a day-to-day -day range and how productive they might be from day to day, uh, we can kind of look at all those different uh, analytics and try to help you kind of improve that overall workflow as well. So that's gonna conclude today's webinar.